Hey friends, welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. We're so glad to have you here with us on this Easter Sunday morning. Let me tell you, you have chosen the right day to join us because in addition to hearing about the hope of resurrection, we've well, already heard from the choir, you've already heard from the bells and the brass, and you're going to hear from all of those groups again. I can't wait to experience this with you. If you're still looking for a seat, the great ones are in the front couple rows. You're welcome. Uh, to come on up here. A special welcome goes out to you if you are joining us here in person or online. We're so glad you're here with us. If you joined us online, be sure to share this so that you can bless your friends and also say hello in the chat so that we can say Happy Easter back to you. And if you are here with us, maybe for the first time or you simply want to connect on a deeper level, I would suggest filling out one of those connect cards, either in the pew rack in front of you um, or by scanning the QR code on the back of your bulletin or finally by going to wayneumc.org slash connect, we would love to have the opportunity to connect with you. And if you would like to connect with Jesus on a deeper level, I've got a really great opportunity for you. Starting tomorrow um, is a series called The Chosen. This is a TV show that's really well done that uh, goes through the life of Jesus, particularly from the lens of his followers from how he called all sorts of different people who were, who were carrying their own baggage, and, uh, and, and yet they felt uh, so incredible whenever he chose them. So tomorrow night at 7 p.m. in the theater, and continuing on from Mondays uh, after that, uh, you'll watch an episode of The Chosen and then discuss it afterwards. This is a great way to get to know Jesus. Now, if you want to get to know our community, starting in two weeks is Welcome to Wayne. Um, this is a three-week class that goes over Christian faith in general, um, United Methodist faith, and our church specifically. So sign up to attend that. Uh, if you've got questions, sign up to attend that. If you're looking to join the church, sign up to attend that. I can't wait to see you here in a couple weeks. Now, in the meantime, maybe Jesus isn't for you yet. Maybe the community isn't for you quite yet, but um, this week, this week, in just a few short days, I think that there's something that we can all get behind, and that is a blood drive. This Thursday afternoon, downstairs, we need your blood. And so, before you leave this place today, you can sign up online later, but guess what? If you do that, you're going to forget. So before you leave this place, there's a table out in the lobby. You can sign up there. Make it a priority. Sign up before you go uh, to give life to others. And then in a couple weeks after that is our church rummage sale. I almost said annual, but I think it's been like five years since before the pandemic. Um, and this is a way that you can stay plugged in to your faith, a way that you can put your faith into action because whenever you buy secondhand, then you're keeping stuff out of the landfill. And whenever you donate to the rummage sale uh, in the week leading up, you're uh, also showing that your stuff doesn't own you. So please consider donating or, um, or shopping at the rummage sale on April 19th and 20th. Put it on your calendars now, but for right now, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Our first hymn is going to be found on page 302 and the screens. Um, I'm going to invite you to rise as you're able after a special introduction from, from the bells and the choir and the brass. Um, for right now, you can remain seated, but I can't wait to sing this song with you.
Thank you for meeting standing. Would you please join me in the congregational prayer? Risen Savior, on this day, the holy day, we come unto the light of your love. As the dawn greets us, we see with the new eyes the splendor of your glory. Grant that we catch the glimmer of the life you offer. And help us to seize the joy that is everlasting with you. Amen. Would you please be seated? At this time, I invite the children to join me up front for the children's message. Come on down. No, this is not the price is right. <laughs> hello, hello, everybody. Lots of fr friendly faces. Come on down. Yeah. You what? You have this at home? This is awesome. Yeah. You got it today. Okay, tell me. Wow. What'd you say, Tommy? Hang on just a second. You got a yellow one like this? Hi. And who have you got? Oh, ballerina bunny. Well, you know, I got the memo that we were supposed to bring a guest to church today. So this is Pete the Peep. So... Yeah, okay. It kind of looks like those paintings of Jesus preaching to the people. No. Oh, this. Okay, I was wondering. So this is actually a good observation because today is a special day. Yell it out. What's today? Easter. Why are we celebrating? Why are we excited? Why are we singing beautiful songs? Because Christ is risen. Why does that matter? Christ is God's son, and today is Easter. Today is actually the most important day in the Christian year. It's not Christmas, it's Easter, because during Easter, we are celebrating new life. Jesus came back from the dead for you and 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 me and everybody here and everybody who believes in him. We've got symbols of new life in here today. You've heard some of the babies crying. We've got one of our new little babies over here, little Bryn, is over here with Pastor Greg and um, his wife Rochelle. And we've got what up here behind me? Flowers. We have Easter flowers, which are symbols of new life. And we've got candles, which are reminders that Jesus is the light of the world. And did anybody pay attention? What color did the cloths turn to? They're white. And they're white because Jesus made us clean from our sins. That's why they turned white. This is why we're singing, He is risen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. This is a day for celebration, you all. And that's why I had to bring Pete the Peep with me. Now, did anybody, just raise your hand. Don't shout out what you got. Did anybody get anything for Easter? Oh. <gasps> Oh my goodness, oh, pretty much everybody got something for Easter. I got this. Don't tell me what you got for Easter, though, okay? You gotta keep it a surprise. You gotta tell me at the end of church today, because I wanna hear everybody's Easter stories about what you got and if you did something special this past week for your spring break. I wanna hear it all. I'll be right outside after the worship service. However, it's fun to get Easter stuff, isn't it? It's, it's just like it's fun to get Christmas presents at Christmas. It's fun to get Easter eggs and candy and get new clothes to dress up in. And some of us got Easter critters. I am so excited to have Pete the Pete. This actually was bought for me by my teenager, my younger teenager, because I loved it so much. Mag said I needed to have it, so Mag bought it for me. So, is Easter really about all those things, though? No. no. 
It's about Jesus and God's love for us and Jesus coming back to life. Death could not hold him. The grave could not hold him. When you see your eggs and you have the empty Easter eggs, that's a reminder of the empty tomb where Jesus' body was. Easter Sunday, they couldn't believe it. He wasn't there. And that's because God loved all of us so much that God knew we needed Jesus to come back to life and needed Jesus to take on all of the bad stuff of our sins to make us clean and whole again, just like those white cloths. So Easter is a special celebration. So today when you're celebrating with your families, when you're eating probably some good yummy Easter treats, when you're playing with your stuffed animals or whatever goodies you got, don't ever forget. It is because of the amazing love that God had for us that he gave Jesus to us to do this amazing thing, to die and come back to life for all of us. And when you think of that, you can say, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, in your brain, or maybe even out loud as well. Because we don't ever want to forget that while it's fun to do all the cool Easter stuff, the real reason for Easter is that amazing thing that Jesus did for us. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. I'll just say the prayer. You don't need to pray with me, okay? Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you so much for this amazing gift that you have given each one of your children. Thank you, God, for helping all of us through each and every day and remind us always of those signs of your love for us through the many things that Jesus did for us. The most important was dying for us and coming back to life for us to reconcile us to you and to make us whole once again. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, so if any of you are preschoolers and your grown-ups want to take you to the preschool class upstairs, the class is happening today, and everybody else, you can go back to your seats. Thank you and happy Easter. Well, since Christine gave away our hiding spot, New life is a gift, isn't it? I know that this isn't really an amening crowd, but I, I really thought that that would get an amen. So let me just try one more time. New life is a gift, isn't it? Amen, amen to that indeed. Sometimes that new life is, is literal, and sometimes, sometimes that, that new life shows up whenever we break the power of addiction and oppression. Sometimes that new life shows up whenever someone has enough to eat or a warm place to stay for the first time in a while. New life shows up in many, many different ways. But Easter, Easter is all about new life. And so the purpose of the church is to be an Easter people, to bring new life wherever we go, to be in the business of bringing new life. So, in just a moment, you're going to have an opportunity to give to the offering to, to fund the new life that the church brings. In addition to the offering plate, you can give online and through the app and through the mail and through your bank's bill pay. No matter how you give, thank you for giving new life.
friends, if Jesus rose from the dead, so will we. Did you know that? That Jesus didn't just get raised from the dead so we could say, good job, Jesus. No, Jesus rose from the dead so that we could rise from the dead as well. As we seek to implant this belief deep down inside of us, I invite you to rise again as you're able as we sing. You'll find the words on the screens and the sheet music in the lobby. for the reading of the Easter story. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they could go and anoint Jesus' dead body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they came to the tomb. They were saying to each other, who's going to roll the stone away from the entrance for us? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, and it was a very large stone. Going into the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe seated on the right side, and they were startled. But he said to them, Don't be alarmed. 
you're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He isn't here. Look, here's the place where they laid him. Go, tell his disciples, disciples, especially Peter, that he is going ahead of you into Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you. Overcome with terror and dread, they fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. did a policy called Just Say No. Um, it was mainly geared at combating drug use, especially among younger individuals. And um, even though, even though it's probably a little bit easier said than done, and even though there have been you know, very legitimate criticisms of its implementation, the thought behind it is, is pretty good. You see, we need to just say no to some things in order to say yes to some better things. In this case, we need to just say no to drugs in order to say yes to sobriety and the life that that brings to us. We need to say no to everyone else so that we can say yes to a partner. And we need to just say no to things that, that don't add value to our life so that we can say yes to that which truly improves our life, to that which makes it better, to that which helps us to live it to the fullest. And so, um, whenever we think about religion, we've kind of made it into a system of a whole bunch of no's. Uh, we, we've put up all of these boxes that say that there are a lot of things that you can't think, and you can't believe, and you can't feel, and you can't experience. But then Easter comes along. And Jesus bursts forth from that tomb. He essentially exits that box, and he smashes all of the other boxes as well to show us the fullness that God has for us, which is a fullness that is greater than we could ever think or imagine. You heard the story earlier. You heard the, or the Easter story uh, just a moment ago. Um, even if you're not a church person, you've probably heard the Easter story before right now. But just so that we can all get on the same page, let me uh, summarize it in just one single statement. Christ is risen, but they... Oh, okay, you can respond to that Christ is risen indeed. That's fine. Well, that's great. Okay. Christ is risen... But they were too afraid to tell anyone. You hear that note about, about how the Easter story ends? It can be a, a, a bit disconcerting. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to that just in case you missed uh, that particular ending of the story. There's the Easter story in, in one quick snapshot. But let's go a little bit deeper than that and let's expound on this just a bit more than that. You see, uh, the women who showed up at the crucifixion are the same women who showed up at the burial, are the same women who showed up on Easter Sunday morning. Now, conversely, the men who didn't show up at the crucifixion are the same men who didn't show up at the burial, or the same men who didn't show up on Easter Sunday morning, which is why you just heard the Easter story read by Sue, and not someone who looks like, well, me. Sorry, guys, and self, I, I suppose. But the women came to the tomb on that very first Easter Sunday morning, and they weren't all that worried about that and, and probably like putting the men in their place and showing how much more faithful that they were, I suppose. Their, their primary concern was actually who in the world was going to roll that stone away? See, there's like this huge stone in front of the tomb, too heavy for them to handle, and so they wondered how that was going to be taken care of and yet, what they found was that that stone had already been rolled away. Now, that startled them, but what startled them even more was how Jesus wasn't there. And in fact, there was an angel there, and the angel was telling him that, hey, guess what? I, I know he was dead just a couple days ago, but guess what? He's alive now. I know you saw him crucified. I know you laid him in this tomb, but now he's alive. That definitely startled them. That definitely caught them off guard. Because as it turns out, on the third day, whenever the sun rose, so did the sun. 
Now after they came to from the emotion of, of, of finding the stone rolled away, after they came to from the emotion of, of not finding Jesus, where they had just put him a, a few short days ago, we read that overcome with terror and dread, they fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Because they were afraid. So much for the angel having told them not to be afraid. Although I suppose that the quickest way to make someone afraid is to tell them not to be afraid. Now, what exactly were they afraid of? Is it because they saw an angel? Is it because they thought they saw a ghost? Or is it because they were coming face to face with the reality of the fact that maybe everything Jesus had ever told them was actually true. And even though that was a very good thing, and even though things were shifting and, and, and changing in their understanding for the better, that left them so incredibly disoriented that their emotions could only be described as fear, terror, and dread. Now, the words of reassurance from the angel are intriguing. See, the angel doesn't say, don't worry, Jesus is going to be with you. No, the angel says, Jesus is going before you. He's going to be ahead of you. Go and follow him. Go to this place. He's already there waiting for you. You see, because that is actually for the best, because it shows that Jesus has already been there. That he's already been through their greatest fear of death. He's already come out on the other side. He's already defeated it. And now he's holding out his hand to all of them and saying, Come and follow me. Death. Death is our greatest fear. We might think it's something else. We might think it's heights or snakes or spiders or public speaking or, or, or being confined in an enclosed space. And I'm sorry for all of the emotions that arise whenever I talk about heights and spiders and snakes and being enclosed in a tight space and having to get up here and, and, and do public speaking. But death is actually our greatest fear. And even though we might say otherwise, our actions tell us something different. You see, because we, we take out these huge life insurance policies because we become afraid of what's going to happen to our families whenever we are no longer here. And we spend tons and tons of money on the medical industry to try to pro prolong our lives for another day or week or month or maybe, if we're lucky, another year. Our actions show what our greatest fear is, and our actions show that our greatest fear is death. What's going to happen when we're gone? How are we going to be thought of when we're gone? What's going to happen to our families whenever we're gone? What's going to happen to our business and our legacy once are gone? And what's waiting for us on the other side whenever we pass away? Who's there? Who's not there? What's there? What's not there? Our fears are inextricably linked up with death. And so what are you afraid of? We all have certain fears, but the good news is that if we can get ourselves to the place of saying no to death and fear, this allows us to say yes to life. Again, it's easier said than done, but if we can get ourselves to that place of saying no to death, saying no to fear, we can truly truly live a full life. And that life doesn't need to end. That life is for the here and now, but that life extends into eternity. It was Jesus who said, God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him won't perish, but will have eternal life. And that life is more than we could ever think or imagine. Because it was also Jesus who said, the thief enters only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they could have life. Indeed, so that they could live life to the fullest. This life, abundant life, life lived to the fullest. Life that doesn't need to end because it extends on and on and on 
with God is a huge promise. It's a huge promise that Jesus made. And I get that. I get that it's a huge promise that Jesus made. But friends, Christ is not only risen. Christ also has riz. (laughs) All right. For those of you who are over 30, like myself, I'm going to help us all out here. Uh, Riz was only added to the dictionary by Merriam-Webster about six months ago. And uh, many say that it's short for charisma. Others will say that that it means something else. But we're going to go with Riz is short for charisma. Whatever it means, Jesus has it. Look, throughout his ministry, he amassed followers. I know he had this inner circle of 12 But there were others who followed him from town to town. Sometimes thousands of people would show up to hear him teach, and they would even stay for dinner. In reality, for a man like Jesus in his 30s to have even 12 close friends is really a true miracle. Um, But his riz is not only in his miracles, but it's also in his authenticity. See, Jesus is as, as real as it gets. He hung out with people who weren't very good for his social standing, but he didn't care. He was confident enough to be his own person. In addition to that, Jesus stood up for people that no one else would. He was brave like that. And Jesus also stood up to people that no one else dared to. He was bold like that. Jesus is as real as it gets. People like Jesus in general Whenever people have something against Christianity, it's not really against him, it's, it's more against his followers. And I get that, but one of my very favorite quotes that I've probably showed some of you before is actually this one from Gandhi. You're in good company. Um, he says, I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. So, even if you don't like his followers, like Jesus, try Jesus, be like Gandhi. Even Gandhi liked Jesus. So, here he is. Jesus, he's conquered death. He's made it to the other side. He's put all of our fears in their place. And he's showing us that there's a different way. He's showing us that our fears, particularly that of death, don't need to keep us chained down. But rather, we can be released from all of that because he's made it through, he's conquered it, he's shown us that he is more powerful than any of that, and he's on the side, on the other side, holding out his hand, reaching it out to us there to comfort us, to offer us peace, to be with us forever and ever, offering us life, abundant life, life to the fullest, life lived with God forever and ever, amen? And that is worth telling somebody. Will you pray with me? Risen Lord, today we are entering into your presence as those who are seeking to experience the resurrection. For some, it's, it's too good to believe. For others, it, it, it invokes fear in the very thought of, of what might happen if that is true. Lord, we're all coming in with with different emotions, all with different feelings, all at different places along our journey of faith. And yet, we believe that you are reaching out your hand to each and every single one of us. Those of us who perceive ourselves to be close to you, those of us who know that we're far away from you, those of us who have sought to walk with you all of the days of our life, and and, and those of us who um, the relationship might be a bit newer. Yet you still reach out your hand, yet you still offer us your grace, and you still offer us life, abundant life, life to the fullest, life that goes on and on and on for all of eternity at peace with you. So today, we seek to turn over our lives to you. Lord, if you are truly risen from the dead, then we want to be with you. We want 
to follow you. In everything, we trust you, and we turn it all over to you, knowing that you are the one who still rolls stones away. You are the one who takes away our fears. You are the one who brings life where all we can see and find for ourselves is death. And so we pray all of this in the name of our risen Lord who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, friends, that life is, just as that prayer ended, forever and ever. And we do, in fact, say amen to that. The musicians are going to be getting in place right now, and, and uh, as they do, I'll let you know that our final song is going to be both on the screens and page 312 of your hymnal. However, they've got a special arrangement for us, so feel free to open up to 312 to see the notes, but look up here for the screens. And uh, like the first hymn, we'll cue you whenever it's time to rise and join in after a special musical introduction.
Friends, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that you know that Christ is risen. We hope you know that death is defeated. We hope you know that there's nothing left to fear at all. We also hope that you join us again next time as we continue to tell of the incredible life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. But until we've had an opportunity to gather again, go forth in the power of the resurrection. Alleluia. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen and happy Easter.